Hello, welcome back. We are doing another live stream. And today I'm working on some Tyranids. If you're joining us for the first time, hello, my name is Sam. Welcome to Big Nerds Wargaming. Um, and this is the weekly live stream where I go over and um, just kind of show what I'm working on currently and talk through my process as I'm doing it. Um, yeah, and paint some miniatures. So, today I'm working on some Bond Ryan's Leapers. So this is what the finished product is going to look like. Nothing too crazy, but um, working on getting this unit of six all wrapped up. So I've been working on these a little bit off camera. We just need to do some details on the hooves and on the um, fleshy bits as well as the skin and finish up the base. So I'll probably finish this whole unit here on stream tonight. And then I have a lictor that I need to start painting, which is all ready to go off to the side. All right, so just trying to remember where I left off. So I think the next thing I should do is probably start on the purple accent color on the flesh. And to do that, I'm going to be using Xerxes Purple. Yeah, give that a good shake. And if you're watching this video after this has gone up, thank you for checking it out. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to catch this live, I do this every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. Working on something new all the time. And we have regular videos every other week, roughly. Sometimes uh, a little bit more frequently, but uh, at a minimum every other week. And uh, we do battle reports, um, kind of sit and chat videos. Um, Rain, crafting, painting tutorials, all that good stuff. Anything miniature wargaming related, uh, we do that, so be sure to check that out. Alright, so I am going to actually zoom this in a little bit closer to so see what I'm doing better. And I'm just going to get in all of these kind of uh, vents that they have on the side of their arms and legs as well as some of these inner fleshy uh, connective areas. Work around the elbows, those little vents inside the arms and legs. I really like the purple color, it's a nice contrast to everything else that's kind of going on in my paint scheme. My custom Tyranid High Fleet, High Fleet Yochan. And in my head cannon, I like to think that they butt heads with the space balls a lot. But sometimes I got a bone to pick when it comes to space wolves. Just getting all the purple fleshy bits touched up here. Now I did these in a batch of six, which is kind of a lot for a model of this size. Um, so I've been kind of slowly working through this unit over the past uh, week or so. Two weeks, probably. Just getting a uh, a little caught up here. Been busy working on editing some videos, shooting some new videos. We got a new narrative series going up, the Pariah Nexus. Um, kind of playing through some crusade stuff on there, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Episode one came out last week, so 
you haven't checked that out, be sure to check that out. And if you want to follow us on other socials, um, our Instagram is probably the most active besides YouTube. Uh, post pictures of um, Warhammer stuff on there. Um, usually the stuff I'm working on or um, cool tail setup. So if you want to see some cool miniature pictures, check that out. The link to our Instagram is in the video stream description here. So you can find a link there. We also have a Twitter account, or X, and a TikTok. Not very active on those. Um, but maybe we will be more in the future. Evening, Sam. How's it going? Hello, David. It is going just fine. Getting back to painting my Tyranids and... Finishing up these Von Ryan's Leapers. Mentally preparing myself for a tournament I have this upcoming Saturday. I'm gonna be playing with my Necrons. That should be fun. Good, good. I see bugs. Lots of bugs. Yes. I had started painting these uh, maybe last week or so off camera um actually it's probably been two weeks now been uh i've been falling behind but i thought i'd finish these up on stream and maybe start on my next lictor because i have some pyramids i need to paint up for the crusade i'm starting in two weeks Played against my son-in-law and his Necrons this past Saturday. Resisting the urge. <laughs> yeah. How did that go? Did the Necrons defeat the uh, the Adepta Sortas? Played against the uh, Space Wolves yesterday for a competitive practice game, and uh, my opponent did not disappoint. He created a very tough list, and I got stomped, absolutely stomped. But it was good because I needed uh, some practice for what I'm going to be facing on Saturday. So I kind of got some ideas to tweak my list. Be doing the hypercrypt detachment for the Necrons. A monolith and a Catan shard. Some warriors, wraiths. Should be fun. Felt it a draw, but I had him on the, on the ropes. We had time limit, unfortunately. We only got two and a half. Turns in is 47-43 when we stopped. Ooh, very close. The battle was shifting in my way in a hurry. Does not appreciate my exorcist the same way I do. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Well, that sounds exciting. Uh, I always love a good close game. Um, or like when they come down to the last round and then that's when things kind of shift. So it's kind of a bummer when it's lopsided early on. And then you're just kind of going through the motions at that point. Yeah, nothing like a close game. It's always the best. Most enjoyable. I don't I don't mind losing um, a close game. Come to think of it, I feel like I've been losing a lot lately. 10th edition. No, I just haven't quite cracked the list building or the, uh, the strategies yet, but uh, I think I just need to play more games.
That's okay, I'm uh, I, I can take losses pretty well. I'm just happy to be rolling dice. Just gnarly feet. You losing? Not with Necrons. <laughs> hey Ben, how's it going? So Ben, I see uh, the uh, our battle report is up. I don't know if you've seen that, but yeah, you did a good job there. my hand at a little voice acting for the intro some vocal effects that was kind of fun so a little behind the scenes I had uh, I asked chat GPT to write me a monologue for uh, Zarek the Silent King and chat GPT did not disappoint <laughs> intro was really cool thank you glad you liked it yeah, I hope to do kind of more of that stuff uh, for other narrative stuff in the future. We'll see. In the past, I had um, just used like a text-to-voice system, which is kind of fine. It's fine, but um, you don't really get the emotion in the voice that you do with an actual human saying it. Necrons are silly good. Yeah, they have some. Uh, they have some good stuff. I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping to do okay in this tournament on Saturday. Yeah, Ben, you're local. I think they got some spots open still. At the. Uh, at the store. Up in, uh... Hey, Luke, I'm sorry to hear about Scurly Custodies getting lost. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a new thing. Alright, two purples down. My son in law is running the Silent King and two spire looking guys. Um, was it the Canaptic Doomstalkers? Kind of like the big walker guys with the big cannon on their back. And you three independent destroyers, which annoys me to know. Oh, yeah, because then you have to dedicate so many shots when you're shooting them. Instead of just dumping everything into the one unit and spilling them over. Tall ones with the big, yeah, those ones. The Doomstalkers. The Doomstalkers are all right. I feel like they can be a little fickle, but when they hit, oh man, do they hit! Although there's some detachments that you can um, you can uh, make them better with, like uh, the Canaptic Court. Since they're Canaptic, they get the uh, reroll ones or reroll the hit roll if you're in the power zone, which is nice. Um, or even in the Awakened Dynasty, if you have a uh, character with the, the plus one to hit aura upgrade enhancement, and just have them hang out by the, the Doomstalker, then you get some good reliable shooting for fairly lowish points. So I think they're only 130. 135 points per model, which is pretty nice. Overwatch hitting on 5, yeah, that's another good thing too. With a blast, 
Although the downside of it being blast is if you get engaged in melee, you can't do much. So something I thought went away in regards to big guns never tire is I remember 9th edition you couldn't shoot blast weapons if you're engaged in melee. It turns out that's also still a thing in 10th edition. However, they state that in the blast weapons rules and not in the big guns never tire rules. So, really confusing rules writing on their part. But if you look under the weapon abilities and blast, it says that you can't fire blast in engagement range. So that kind of changes things a little bit for me and uh Kind of changes how I view Kinetic Doomstalkers, so they're much better to sit in back, I think. And blast away from a distance. Introduce, introduce them to my Exorcist Hunter Killer missiles. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with the new uh, Sortas Coda. Codex this summer, along with the Gene Stealers one, should be exciting. Your paint scheme is slowly progressing from Alien to Cthulhu. Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, it's definitely evolved over the years. I mean, it doesn't help that these guys look like a Cthulhu with their, uh, their tendril mouths. I'm so, so anxious for having that scene the orcs has in store. Yeah. The orcs one looks pretty fun. They got some good stuff. played a game at the at the game store with uh, Andrew who you've seen on this channel he um he played the index orcs however he took one of their detachment rule previews and just used that with um you know the index stratagems because we didn't know what the stratagems we didn't know what the stratagems were yet are yet so uh that one was pretty funny um he had a whole list of killer cans So that was fun. I don't get to play against the orcs very much. They just seem like a, a fun, goofy army. <laughs> I like the green in there. Thank you. Yeah. So Ben, the green's always been there. It's just probably a little bit more noticeable. Um, I think the green dies down a bit once I do the, the gloss garnish on the skin. Kind of darkens them up again. But I, I did do a layered green where I, I used um, Castilian green, which is like a very dark green. And then I go over it again with Elysian green make it pop a little bit more so yeah kind of improving my paint scheme this is supposed to be an army that I can paint really fast but the more I paint I'm starting to I don't know I'm starting to raise my standards a little bit on some of my stuff which is which is fine and all except for I'm still acquiring models at the same rate, so I, my backlog is uh, it's growing fast. I like that the orcs brought back some random possibility to dice rolling to add the effect. It reminds me of the fun times way back. Yeah, fantasy games in the basement and the, uh, the lookup tables and charts.
Yeah, that one orc detachment, it's like, the rule's called, uh, hit this button, or try this button, and it, like, does a random effect. They either, like, I think it increases strength, or no, it increases plus one the, like, AP damage, or... It, it'll do a, a random weapon upgrade every time you shoot. And then there's also a chance that it can, like, uh, deal mortal wounds to, the, to your unit. Which is just super flavorful. I love, I love rules that are flavorful like that. down on the purple. Two to go. Xerxes purple. Dave, what are you playing in the upcoming Crusade League? Ben, I don't believe Dave is local. Left out. Yeah, a few of us in our local gaming group are doing a, a crusade. Looking forward to that. That's what I'm getting some of these tyrannies painted up for. Shadow of Seattle. Wow. Well, we've been getting some of that rain uh, today. Well, yeah, speaking of Wisconsin, uh, they're moving Adepticon to Milwaukee next year. Uh, there's a big convention center downtown that they um, expanded, so they should have a lot more space than they did um, at the previous location in Illinois. And I'm pretty excited about that because I'm pretty close to Milwaukee, so it's a lot shorter of a drive for me. Yeah, Milwaukee would be a great place for Adepticon. A lot of good restaurants, and it's not too crazy of a city. Nice thing, I'm trying to make it to Adepticon next year. Oh, yeah. Ten out of ten. Would recommend. So it looks like uh, Emperor's Children are finally going to be getting a full release at some point. Probably, I, have, I had to guess, it's probably going to be at the end of 10th edition, going into 11th edition. Uh, kind of like how they did the World Eaters, would be my guess. Because remember with the World Eaters, they did the, uh, the index uh, rules in a White Dwarf. Like that last year of 9th edition. 
But that's pretty cool. I like the Emperor's Children. My biggest concern is the crowds. The crowds are... It is, it is, there are crowds, yes. They're not too bad, though. You kind of get used to it, too. But if you're not used to it, it can be a bit of a sensory overload. Never had the urge to paint that much pink. Hoping for 10th edition, Empress Children, give enough time to let my wallet rest. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> now, Ben, you can't get Empress Children and not paint them. Because that's what they're all about. Bright colors. Just like airbrush them all. Purple and pink. Well, that was pretty funny uh, today. Uh, when, when Todd said that uh, you're going to do them in slanesh gray steam. <laughs> That made me chuckle. The Ashborn faction, just like Morrowind. They can't all be Ash. Alright, so purple is almost done on these guys. And then... Just gotta do the... Mantis arms and their mouth bits. Is that a disabled Tyranid? Oh, because he doesn't have any arms? No, 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 no. I got him right here. Them being press fit. I didn't glue these together so that'd be easier to paint some of these because their uh, their poses are very dynamic. I think if there's any disabled turnids, they'd go right back into the uh, biomass reclamation pools and get broken down to spawn some newer, healthier turnids. Thought we found our first good bug. Nah, nah. The only good bug is a dead bug. I 
How are you feeling about your upcoming tournament? You feeling comfortable now playing competitively with a group of players you don't know? Um, I am feeling... I played a practice game yesterday. It did not go very well. I got stomped by a bunch of space wolves. Um, I got charged by Loga, Logan Grim, Grimoire, or whatever his name is, with a bunch of wolfen riders and two units of those. And boy, do they slap. And then there was some uh, gladiator tanks in the back that uh, blew up my monolith. But I've been tweaking my list a little bit, uh, consulting with uh, Andrew's helping me work out my list, and he's going to be lending me some of his doomsday arcs. So I'm going to have I'm going to be introducing those in the list to, uh, for some firepower, um, and kind of you know knowing what to look out for. So I'm I'm hoping I'll do a little bit better on Saturday. All right, um, face tentacles. What did I do those? Okay, those look like they were screamer pink. I'm also gonna do the mantis arms and screamer pink, just to kind of break up the color a little bit. I know in this one I did them in a purple, with a purple wash. Come on, focus. There we go. But I'm gonna do them in screamer pink, I think. Nice, nice. I only heard good things about arcs. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I, I need to I need to get one or two. That's some reliable shooting. They're like D6 plus one shots, strength 14, AP 4, damage 4, and they're blast. So they hit on threes. So if you don't move them, they hit on twos. Also, if you don't move them, they get devastating wounds. So, and they have 72 inches of range. So you just camp those them back, whole game, blasting away, blowing up big stuff. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Very nasty. And they're, they're 200 points. So, not terribly cheap, but... Um, for what they do, I feel like that's a very fair cost. Year of the Arcs. Yeah. But not to be confused with the Arcs of Omen. mouth here without getting it on his claws is a little tricky. Here are the arts or Indiana Jones and the dialysis of dysentery. You know what? That movie didn't get good reviews, but I kinda liked it. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of liked it. I don't know if uh, any of you saw it, but uh, the uh, opening sequence they had a uh, de-aged Harrison Ford, and it was a little jarring at first. But then eventually, I was like, you know what? I would, I would watch a whole movie like this. Just reminded me of. Uh, you know, the, the good ones.
Yeah, the Screamer Pink looks a little bit different than the, uh, the purple. But, I will go over this with a purple wash. So it'll kind of bring it closer to the purple color. Um, and then I might do a little bit of like a dry brush or a highlight on this with uh, maybe Jean Steeler purple or Slanesh gray or something. Just to kind of bring it more into the, the purple color spectrum. Or hue. Maybe hue is a better word. Bring it back to the purple hue. So in our Crusade League, we are doing a painting bonus. So if you paint the unit and add it to your order of battle, you get... If you have it start off with um, re-experience. Or if you have an unpainted unit, which you then paint partially partway through the Crusade, um, you get that same bonus. So nice little incentive to get people to paint their, their miniatures. So these leapers I'm adding will be able to start with three experience points. I'm excited about that. Yeah, the Screamer pink goes on very pink. Very dark pink, but then it, it dries a little bit darker. It looks a little bit more on the red. It's like a reddish pink. Or reddish purple, even. And this particular color is a very strong pigment, so it covers really well. Makes this pretty easy. Very careful not to get on the carrot face, which I've already carefully painted, highlighted. I just want to go back and touch that up. Alright, and then these face tentacles. to get the pink on those front uh, mandibles, face arms. Yeah, I wonder what the uh, scientific term is for uh, hands by the mouth. Oh, these things are nasty. All right. Two down, four to go. Yeah, batch painting can be kind of a drag sometimes, but it really is the most efficient way, I think. Get a lot of models done. I 
next video going to cover Knight's painting. I could use some tips. Yeah, I could too. Um, yeah, I might do like a, a video blog on my nights and to figure out what I want to do uh, for the scheme still. I picked up the 8th edition codex because I remember the 8th edition codex is having um, really good lore as far as the more modern codexes go. So I got that just for the lore and yeah it's got good breakdown of all the, the noble houses and some of their her heraldry and paint schemes so I am kind of currently reading through that trying to decide what house or paint scheme I want to go with. Um, but yeah, it's been in the back of my mind. How am I going to paint those knights? You going to do a custom house or pre-established? Still unknown. Probably a pre-established house. Perhaps. Most likely pre-established. I always go back and forth if I want to do like a custom thing or a pre-established one. But I do really like the established lore. So uh, I've actually been kind of doing most of my armies established uh, factions or sub-factions. Except for my Tyranids. Those are their own breed. Kind of gone through different High Fleet names, but the one I'm currently calling them is High Fleet Yotan. get these mouth tentacles all painted up here then this one will be done and we can move on to the next one your tyranids feed off the foulest of biomass granting the most dark carapace Well, it is the most foulest of biomass, I'll tell you that, because... In my headcanon, I like to think that they have a beef with the Space Wolves. They're just kind of a... A fun faction that you, uh, love to hate. Now, Space Wolves are kind of cool, but they're also kind of uh, a meme. I got the paint fairly thin down here, and this being a nice um, pigment that covers 
pretty well. Um, it's nice because you can have it thinner and so you get more control over where it goes and it has nice coverage. So it's very similar to um, the Fist and Red, which is another paint that has a very strong pigment that you can thin down really far and get good coverage with. They're just very uh, satisfying to paint with, those two colors. And there's a few other colors that do that too. But yeah, if you can get the right consistency, you get good control over where the paint flows and you get some good results. Also not worrying too much about getting full coverage over everywhere I'm painting here because they are darker and you can't really see a lot of this detail unless you look at a strange angle. Look at it from a strange angle um, and I'm also going to be washing this with a dark purple so it's going to get darkened up anyways. So. I think if this is a character model I would a little bit more time but this just kind of being an infantry unit running around in a group just gonna lower the standard a little bit there so I can get this unit done and table ready it's all about picking your battles Is there a paint that you recently bought and or haven't used but you want to incorporate into any upcoming projects? That's a great question. Well, it's funny you should mention that. There's this uh, Turbo Dork paint I got in my Adepticon swag bag. It's like this very coppery color. I was thinking about maybe trying to find a way to incorporate this in my nights somewhere. But I don't know. It seems like copper is often associated with chaos. But I might be able to find a way to make it work. It's a really, uh, really nice color. Well, at least it looks like it's a nice color. I haven't uh, opened it up and used it yet. I haven't really used any other metallic paint outside of uh, Army Painter and Games Workshop, but that this paint looks pretty good. I'm going to need some more Screamer Pink. Water mixed in there. Let's get back in focus. There we go. Let's get these tentacles all pinkified. Yeah, but one of the the, the houses I'm considering for my nights is actually kind of close to the color that. Uh, the previous owner of those knights started painting them. Um, so you got kind of like a a bronzish metal mixed with a, kind of a cream colored or beige for the primary color on the, the knight's armor, which looks pretty sharp. So I was thinking about maybe going with that scheme and just kind of finishing that paint job or I don't know, the green also looks really nice, and so does that blue. 
I uh, probably wouldn't do any red ones. I know that the red knights are kind of more aligned with the Mechanicus. I'm not a huge fan of Mechanicus. So I probably wouldn't have them be one of those noble houses. So yeah, I'm, I'm undecided, long story short. But I am narrowing down some of this, the possible schemes. Alright, last one, here we go. And then we're going to move on to some washes, and then some, actually I should move on to the base details, um, those little bits, and then doing some washes. And then we'll be on the home stretch. How exciting. I think after these leapers and my lictor, I'll probably f start the lictor tonight. We'll see what time it is when I finish these up. Um, and then I'll probably finish that lictor off camera. But I do have a death leaper, which I would like to paint as well, which I need to paint for the crusade coming up that I'm going to be doing. So uh probably be featuring that next week and then i'll probably take a break from painting tyranids on stream after that for a little while maybe um maybe some more eldar or maybe some back to some necrons i got plenty of necrons to paint up courtesy of ben for unloading some of his necrons on me Which I'm very grateful for. Alright, face tentacles on the last leaper. Yeah, all these new models, they have, um, all these fancy base bits, basing bits, which is cool, but it's also kind of annoying because there's more stuff you have to paint. Because it's forcing me to be a little more interesting with my bases. All right. The Screamer Pink is all applied everywhere where it needs to be. Now, I will move on to the bases. So we got like a little bit of a Tyranid thing growing here. Um, so I think I'll just paint those similar to the Carapace. So we'll do Thunderhawk Blue for that. Some of that on my palette. And then we'll do some. Looks like we got some stones. So we'll go with a dark brown, maybe. Maybe some steel legion drab. Some brown stones. Earthy textures. Uh, 
then I'll bring out some gene stealer purple. Some of the uh the Tyranid growth. Get some of that on my palette. I'll probably also use this on the the feeder arms for a little highlight color. And then I'll also pull out some Elysian Green. Some other details on the bases. And this should be good enough. What do you think you're going to do for the Golden Demon Contest Adepticon 2025? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, A, will I actually do something for Golden Demon next year? Maybe. I'm debating it. But what would I do? That's a good question. Well, maybe if I don't have my Kazarkin kill team painted up by then, I could do a, a squad submission where I paint them up. Um, I've always wanted to paint them up like the alien colonial marines. So that'd be kind of fun. So I'm just going to paint up these uh, fleshy pods here. All Elysian green for now, and then I'll go back over with another color. We got a, a stone back here, which I'll paint with uh, that Steel Legion drab. little carapace on this little uh, spore chimney growing. Paint that with the Thunderhawk blue. There we go. Just a couple touches of color there. And this Elysian green is just about dry, so I'm going to come around again with Gene Stealer purple. And just focus on these kind of like Uh, I don't know what you call it. It almost looks like uh, like vines or uh, fleshy growth kind of around those pods like that. And we also got a little bit going on over here. So let's add a little touch of gene stealer purple there. And then that should be good enough because this is going to get a nice brown wash with Agrax Earthshade. So all those imperfections and colors will kind of just blend together and fade into the background as they should because it is just some basing bits. So similarly over here, I'm going to switch to a different brush. That's got a little bit bigger tip. And... I'll start with the Steel Legion Drab on this big rock here that he's standing on. Just try to get everywhere on there. Good base coat there. But yeah, doing Kazrakin um kind of an aliens colonial marine style would be kind of fun and uh maybe incorporate some gallo dark terrain for like the display board part of it or something i don't have to look at the rules to see if there's any uh rules against 3d printing stuff for um like their display board or the diorama bits. I know the models themselves have to be Games Workshop, but I don't know 
how much of it has to be either scratch built or not. But that would be one option. Um, if I ever get around to painting Gilliman before next year, maybe I'll do Gilliman. Although, I know that's kind of a common one you see. But that's okay. I'm going to let this one dry and I'll come back to this base. Um, what do we got? I'm going to paint this other one that's got the similar rock. Tonight on Ben's Hobby Corner, local artist and gaming enthusiast, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, Ben's, Ben's asking me all the questions tonight. I appreciate it. You know, I can only say I'm painting this arm so many times. That's what we do here. We have fun. We hang out. We talk about this hobby that we all love. coat down the steel legion um we'll come back to this other oh that one's still drying let's do let's do this one this one's got like a little bit small detail this will paint up really really quickly all right so we will get the elysian green on the inside here off my brush and we'll get the Thunderhawk blue on the carapace pump that jam <laughs> Because I'm so impatient waiting for this to dry, we're getting some wet blending between the green and the pink. And the purple. Only because I'm impatient. I'm not doing this on purpose. These colors look kind of gross right now, but they'll look a lot better once we uh, do our brown wash and tie it all together. All right, this one looks like it's got a piece of uh, I-beam or rebar. So, let's get some metal. I'll use uh, Warp Black Bronze. Here's a color I don't use very much. Which actually, ironically, I think this would be a color I would paint some of the metal bits on my knights if I go with the... Uh, the cream colored house scheme. Agrax Earthshade will set you free. Hey, true story. Absolutely. Magic in a bottle. That and Null Noil. It's amazing what those what those two washes can do. To any paint scheme. Non oil is of the gods. All right, got that one all painted up. Oh, we got another one. Another steel beam, metal beam. 
Just going to quickly hit that. A sloppy overbrush here. It's okay. It's just basing bits. It'll all blend in with the base once this is all done. The gods of darkness. The gods of known. Nome, I believe, is an, a province in the Empire, Warhammer Fantasy, where they build and specialize in all the black powder weapons, cannons and Hellblaster volley guns, steam tanks, all that good stuff. I never did get a steam tank. That would have been fun. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna do a. What do I do? Where's my? Yeah, I'm gonna do a reverse where we do purple on these little pods, and then we'll do the uh, Elysian green on the uh, the growth around it. Nice little way to introduce some diversity and variation to these bits because they're the exact same across different models. Right, so I'm going to let that one dry for a spell and we'll come back to this guy over here. This one I will give purple coloring on the growth I gotta get some thunderhawk blue on this little spore chimney growing just like that And then this other one, which is the exact same piece, we'll do Elysian green on the growth. Just a little bit of variation between the two. Kind of break it up so it's not so samey everywhere. I think I just got to come back to a couple of these. This one, for sure. And then we'll be ready for some magic. AKA Agrax Earthshade. I'm still seeing Cthulhu. Yep. Thanks for that, Ben. That's okay. I like Cthulhu. Cthulhu is cool. Very creepy. All right. Time for that. Magic in a bottle. I'm gonna go over the whole base. All over these basing detail bits. I 
little wash and a little dry brush goes a long way for speed painting. And after this dries on the base, I'm going to go over it with uh, uh, Yakar Flesh. Just over the, uh, the sand on the base. That should uh, make that pop a little bit. Um, and then I did pick up these little purple tufts at Adepticon, which I've been starting to place on some of my newer Tyranid bases. So I will do the same here. Just add a little bit of fun and color. Love that purple um, highlight accent color that my Tyranids have. So that'll be cool. And I think a lot of these arms I actually have to glue down still. They just kind of loosely fit. I also do have some Space Marines I still need to paint. The, uh, the new uh, Stern Guard Veterans. Or Veteran Squad. I don't know if they're actually Stern Guard or not, but those ones I have to paint. The ones that came in via Leviathan started. So maybe I'll do those next week, but probably still gonna be the Death Leaper. I... We're a betting man. I'll come back to those space marines at some point. I just can't paint the same thing over and over sometimes. But uh, the bounce around. Sometimes it's uh, whatever I'm currently playing. I get inspired and I want to pick up some more units for that army. So I do jump around from different armies as I'm playing. Currently in a Tyranids slash Necrons by I am just enjoying the Necrons right now because they were a little on the weaker side in 9th edition. Now they're they're very strong currently, which is fun. And they're probably gonna get nerfed pretty soon. Um so. I'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts, right? Is Sam a better player than he is a painter? No, I am not. I think my current win rate for 10th edition games is probably... Three out of every ten. I have a problem. I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I feel like I did better in ninth edition when everything was like way more complicated. You'd think it'd be easier because everything's a little bit more streamlined and simplified, but I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling. The thing that gets me is the list building is, I'm still, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the list building. With all the war gear being free, which I guess isn't horrible as long as they kind of make each war gear option kind of like have a purpose. So it's not like you'd never take one or the other, but uh, not having points per model is really throwing me off with list building because I want to do this one thing, but I have to like 
pick out a whole unit because it won't fit and find a different unit that I probably normally wouldn't use, but, but because they happen to be this many points, they fit in that spot. So it's kind of power level all over again. Better painter, but I've always, always a joy on the table to play against. Plus, the terrain. Never passed up a chance to play at that table. Thank you for the kind words, Ben. Yes, uh, I do like to have a good table full of terrain. And good terrain. I think that just adds to the experience so much more. It's so much more immersive. Makes the whole game more enjoyable. All right, Druki Violet on the Cthulhu Arms. Just darken up that screamer pink a bit. Face tentacles as well. Luxury of having more armies. Ninth favorite Tyranids were strong at the end of ninth. Now Necrons in tenth. Yep. If you have a big enough collection, you always have something that's good. <laughs> Space Marines are good. Um, early in ninth, and now they're they're good. Currently, some of those detachments are really nasty. The Space Marines. Oh, Ooh, close call. He's okay. These, uh, these models like to go flying, running off on their own. You waited forever on that Tyranid Codex. Yes, I did. They, uh, they definitely needed it. But man, when that thing came out, they were a force to be reckoned with. And then they got nerfed up real good. I feel like the Tyranids in 10th edition are kind of in a similar boat that the Necrons were in 9th edition. They just received this huge range refresh. They're kind of poised as the big bad of the edition. And they kind of are a little underwhelming. Which is too bad. I hope that they uh, they tweak the points and give them a good buff. Kind of like they did with Necrons in 9th edition towards the end. Pretty much everything got the core keyword. So you could do a bunch of cool stuff with them. But we'll see. Let's see what the, the data slate gods give us. Death Guard release had the unfortunate... Yet, true to lore, coincidence with COVID. <laughs> they were strong. Just no one went to tournaments at that time. Yeah. Although, I feel like Death Guard are... They're not in a bad spot currently. I feel like there was a lot of negativity when 10th edition launched. And the changes that they made to Death Guard. They kind of felt like they were neutered or 
they lost a bunch, but I mean, a lot of armies got a bunch of simplification across the board. But um, with the balance update, where you uh, Death Guard getting the pick two contagions is pretty nasty. Specifically, the minus one to wound is very hard because they're already high toughness, so that's turning sometimes a four to a five or a five to a six, which is just so hard to wound. And you have to roll fives and sixes. So, I think Death Guard are in a pretty good spot now. Until in the meantime, you know, until their codex comes out. Hopefully. Although something needs to be done about those Space Marines. They're just... They're too good. I'll always take a 50% win rate. Yep. Alright. Well, these bases are still drying, so I'm gonna have to wait on that. But. And I have to wait on these arms to dry. Water break. But you can already see what that Agrax Earthshade wash did. Really neatened up those uh those basing bits. Really kind of just blended it all together nicely. Here's another good example. So I'm pretty happy with how these are turning out. I think uh, while I wait for some of this to dry, I'm gonna start gluing these arms down. Get things a little bit more permanent. Keep turning around, my uh, furnace is making no, or like a drain hose that's dripping. making a gurgling noise that's very distracting. Hopefully that's not coming through on the, the microphone. Which I don't think it is. I think I got a pretty decent noise gate set up. But my painting desk is like right in the, the basement's utility room. So sometimes I pick up extra unwanted sounds. No noise over here. Awesome. Good to hear. I'm also excited that uh, sometime this year, whenever it's available, I'll be switching my internet provider to AT&T Fiber. Not a sponsor. <laughs> I don't like it though. Uh, but I'll be able to have uh, really good high quality streams going forward once I get all switched over to that. So hopefully uh, some of these legs that we've noticed in the chat, um, as well as video quality dropping in and out, uh, will go away once that internet is available and we switch over to that. So I'm very excited for that. Also, uploading videos will go a lot quicker. Like, a lot quicker. It will be super nice. Just gotta wait until they're done laying the fiber in our neighborhood, and then I can get switched over. So the glue I'm using is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Very popular. Sure, you've all seen and used this stuff. 
but it's great for I just like it because it's really flowy and you can dry fit things usually and just just dab it and it'll flow right in there and get into the cracks and bond really nicely those arms are glued in these ones are not and it'll melt the plastic together form a very strong bond Yeah, waiting for these washes to dry. That's always a minor annoyance. I get very impatient. Hence the hair dryer. All right, chat. What, um, what? Hobby projects are you currently working on, or still working on? I know Ben, you've got some nights you're working on. Magnetizing. Or you were working on those, are those done? No. David, you mentioned you were working on the Triumph of St. What's-Her-Face. Any progress made on that one? That's, uh, that's quite the piece. Building my, my Night Tyrant right now. Next is Magnetizing My War Dogs. Times four, yeah. The Night Tyrant, is that the one with the shoulder guns? Are you, are you, oh, I'm working on my Night Tyrant base. Nice. Well, hello, are you kidding me? Welcome. Yeah, shoulder rockets are cannon. And opposite his head. Hell yeah. Oh yes, I knew it was you, Collins. I didn't want to dox you. Alright, we got six leapers almost done. Next, just got to. So, this base is not quite dry. I'm gonna use my super weapon. The hair dryer. Yeah, so Collins will be joining us in the Fry and Nexus Crusade campaign. We're actually filming an episode later this week. So I played a few few guys in our uh, our gaming group here. So that should be a fun game. Heck yeah, looking forward to it. Me too. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I, I, I can pull off a win here. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It hasn't been going too good for me. <laughs> nah, but they've been, they've been good games. All fun. Haven't had a chance to watch the Ultramarine match. Well, 
if you do watch it, at least watch the intro. Because that's the part I'm most proud of. <laughs> I don't know. You might be okay, Collins. I am bringing the Void Dragon. But even if I lose, that'll be okay. I think we'll just have to do some tuning for uh, the second wave. Uh, which I think I'm probably going to do a second wave of try an Nexus after these initial ones go up. Just because I'm having a lot of fun with it, I'm really enjoying the narrative. Uh, crusade missions. Kind of breaking away from some of the match play stuff. I feel like match play just gets so much attention online. And Crusade is just so fun. Five people watching. Holy smokes! <laughs> Hello, Chris. Welcome. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Oh, I got six concurrent viewers, apparently. This is, uh, this is quite the group. Good stuff. Just doing a little dry brush on my bases here. Oop! Dropping stuff. Where is the Crusade tutorial video? Um, it is still in my head. I, I do want to make one, and I want to make one before we start our crusade, so it's helpful. I suppose if it goes up a little bit after, that's okay too, because the first cycle is two weeks, so give us plenty of time. But uh, yeah, I do want to get that made up. I think that'll just be helpful for a lot of people in general, um, because crusade can be a little overwhelming and confusing um, if you've never played it or done it before. It just seems like a lot at once, but it really isn't too bad. But yeah, I, I do want to make a little uh, how-to on that. I think that'd be helpful. I will try to get to that as soon as I can. Probably, maybe start working on it this weekend. Oh wait, I have a tournament. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit on Sunday, we'll see. But definitely, I, I, I will get to it. I think that'll be a great video. I'm just going to take some Gene Stealer purple and do a little dry brush on these Mantis arms. I do have 12 more War Dogs. Holy cow. <laughs> a lot of War Dogs, Collins. A lot of War Dogs. Very subtle dry brush, but it's uh, you can notice it, so that's good. Just picking out a little details here and there, these little arm, arm maw, mantis arm thingies. Yeah, buddy, easy peasy. <laughs> Is this what it feels like to get raided? <laughs> of a saint over here. 
that's magnetizing all that. Man, yeah, that's... That's quite the job. I magnetized two Carnifexes, and that was uh, enough to make me never want to do it again. Until I did it a third time. All right, uh, the base rims. Army Painter, Field Gray. Getting any more games in this week before the tourney? Um, just a fun narrative game for the, uh, the YouTube channel. But not a tournament prep game, no. So I did some retooling of my list. And, uh... I think I ha I'll have a, something a little bit more better. More better. That's proper English. Um, for the tournament. I'm hoping... I can uh, do something about some of those nasty space ring detachments. Absolutely nasty. So now after I finish these rims, I'm going to go over the skin on the Tyranids with the technical art coat watered down to give them that xenomorph buggy shine. Better men's packing six hand shards for board chaos. <laughs> that would be nuts. Absolutely crazy. One's hard enough to kill. I can't imagine six of them flying around. Yeah, I think the, uh,. The Transcendent Katana is pretty nice, so you can like teleport around the board. It's kind of balanced, I think. Nightbringer seems good for elite infantry or monsters, maybe. I mean, yeah, Void Dragon's obviously good against vehicles, and then the the, the Deceiver, the one you never really see, he's like the character sniper. But yeah, a list of all of those, that'd be, that'd be fun. It wouldn't be fun to play against, though. Yeah, I do want to get some ghost arcs. Those are really good. seem like really good reliable shooting take out big stuff now let the record show when the crusade starts this unit of six Von Ryan's Leapers, which is going to be in my order of battle, will get their three experience point boost. Because they will be done and painted within the bonus window. Oh yeah. I have a ton of Plague Marines to paint up. Did you get the, uh, the Chaos uh, Plague Brain Heroes pack? Or boxes? Twenty-seven and a baking tin. Oh, primed and base coated. It's just details from that point, right? And some washes.
Well, painting uh, Chaos Marines is as tedious as non-Chaos Marines. I don't envy you. 27, that's a lot. Alright, I think two thin coats on this base ought to do it. This Army Painter Field Gray doesn't cover very well. But it does get a nice smooth finish if you thin it down good and do multiple coats. Only Griblies. Oh, wait, we're 73% Griblies, yes. All the tentacles and bubos and other gross things coming off of them. Not to mention their weapons. The snot dripping from their guns. Yeah, Death got a gross. In a good way. Here I thought I was gonna be able to start painting my lifter tonight. I got a little uh, ahead of myself. But I am happy that these leapers are gonna be wrapped up. One last thing on my desk that's incomplete. So if anyone uh, hasn't figured it out, I'm going to be trying to do a uh, Vanguard Swarm for the Crusade. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Vanguard Swarm with uh, Victors, Death Leaper, Von Ryan's Leapers. Gene Steelers, all that good stuff. Stomach, mouth, maggots. Gesund. Gesundheit, thank you. Hmm. I'm like, what is that word? Oh, that looks like German. I hope I'm not getting sick. I was, uh, I was sick for a tournament in February. That wasn't fun. Well, the tournament was fun, but being sick wasn't. Probably just that spring air. just enough. Look at that. Zero waste. It's a beautiful thing. Alright. Now I'm going to do the glossy coat on their skin for that cool effect. I'm not sure the Tyranid Detachment rules offhand. So the Vanguard Swarm. Uh, the Vanguard Invader Unit. So your Gene Stealers, your Von Ryan Sleepers, your Lictors, your Gargoyles, um... Broodlord and uh, Parasite and Morphex is another one. They all get the ability to advance and charge. Um, and then there's a whole slew of uh, you know, stratagems that target those types of units. So they're very mobile, stealth, and nasty at melee. So 
it'll be interesting once the, we get to some larger games with vehicles um, and bigger units um, help to thread in some monsters and bigger stuff so I think like the Norna simulator would be a nice thematic uh, monster to add to that but yeah oh yeah these guys movement 10 advance and charge with that detachment and fight first and when you run them in a unit of six chef's kiss yeah beautiful you just gotta shoot them before they get to you all right so for this i like to water down the art coat so it's not so intense and I use a crappy brush for that. Where is my crappy brush? Here's one. So we'll put a couple dollops in one of these. About two brush loads. And then I got my water. We'll add a little bit of water to that. It's pretty thin down. Get this nice milky finish. My older Chernids, I used a very thick art coat, which is very shiny, but uh, watering it down, you get kind of a more dulled, toned down effect. A little more on the subtle side. Although the more I paint these, I'm starting to like the way they look without the gloss coat. But I feel like having a like over 200 models already glossy. I can't really go back now. I'm committed at this point. Committed to the bit. Oh, you know what? I didn't paint the eyes. I gotta paint the eyes still. Those eyes are supposed to be yellow. Well, it's easy on gloss, just hit it with matte varnish. Yeah, that's true. Matte varnish will... will take down the gloss. But another benefit too of the gloss is it acts as a protective coat, which I suppose a matte varnish would also do. But, I don't know, I go back and forth. I like the slimy alien xenomorph look. But then, sometimes, you know, before I do that, I, I do like the, uh... You can see, like, the greens in the, the skin a little bit better. Before it gets glossed up. I think layering up the green helps, though. I started with a dark green this time, and then worked my way up to a light one. With, uh, two dry brushes. Instead of just going right at right right against the black with a very light green. And I think building up the colors definitely helps kind of smooth everything out. So I'm trying to avoid the hair face parts, just trying to get the skin. Know the slime but yeah glossy finishes feel less detailed somehow yeah I feel like it like um, it it boosts the contrast between light and dark so I think you lose some of the middle colors in that gradient and kind of in the natural lighting and shading of things I think that's what ends up happening. Or else, because the gloss catches the light more, you notice the lighter parts of the 
color more. So you, you notice less of the darkness, I don't, or like the darks become, they look more intense than they actually are. Like extremes on both ends. Sense. I don't have a very good visual language. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of just stumbling my way through it. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> trying to find the right, right words to describe what you're seeing. Be tricky. Like when I have to explain to my family members uh, what I do for a living at work, and I start talking about cloud technology, and their eyes just glaze over, I'm like, well, how do I explain? How do I explain this to somebody who doesn't know hardly what the heck I'm talking about? Figuring out, I don't know, ways for everyday people who don't work in that field to understand what it is that you do. That's always a challenge, and I still struggle with that. I have no idea. <laughs> Without boring them to tears they're needing, like... Yeah, exactly. It's an exciting job, trust me. I know it sounds really lame and boring right now the way I'm explaining it, but uh... this guy. They'll be all gussied and glossied up. It's gonna be real nice. <laughs> Do you work towards the new world governance? I mean, maybe. <laughs> My CEO asked for a single description of an outage and to have it make sense to a layman. It was four paragraphs. My boss there is the little laugh about it. She said he's like needs to sentences on technical stuff. Yeah. It's like how do you Yeah, there's just too much, like, context you have to establish sometimes to explain a problem. That requires so much explanation of what these things are and why they failed and... Yeah. Best way to describe an outage is lost money. They usually understand. Yeah. Money talks.
All right, we have all the gloss hard coat applied. Now we just have to sit here and wait for it to dry. Just kidding. Um, I think I can apply some of these little purple plants. In the meantime, let's be careful not to touch the skin. It puts the art coat on the skin. So I got some of this gamer grass from Adepticon. Purple tuft. Let's, uh, let's pull back a little bit. Alien purple. I like the way this stuff looks. Uh, I don't have my little tweezers with me. Oh well. I'll just use my fingers. So this stuff already has like the, the stickies applied to it. Which is really cool. I don't know, it's just like your standard army painter or gaming tufts. But look at that. Makes my bases a little bit more interesting. A little pop of color. Without being too obnoxious. Collins, I think you what you you mentioned uh, I should get some little tufts for my bases to add some more color. And uh yeah. I think these look nice. Alien plants for the win, yeah. I had such a hard time deciding what color to go with. But uh, I think purple was the right choice because it, it goes nicely with the uh, the purple accent color that they have. Nice cohesive theme going on. I mean, these take like a second to apply, so... Really easy way to spruce up your whole army. Maybe I'll eventually go around and tuft up the rest of my army. At least the characters, I think. And any new stuff will definitely get the tufts. Boom! Look at that! Six Von Ryan's Leapers all ready to go. All ready for that crusade. And that feels like a great stopping point. Um, thanks everyone for hanging out. This is a lot of fun. Nice chatting with y'all. Um, I'll be back next week, Tuesday, with something else. Probably a Death Leaper. Maybe a Lictor, if I don't finish my Lictor before then. But, it'll be cool. Chef's Kiss. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, these, these boys are ready for a crusade. I'm excited. These are really fun, especially in units of six. They get six attacks each. It's really fun. All right, well, you all have a lovely evening, everybody, and I'll catch you next time. See you next week, 7 p.m. Central Time.